Predominantly, militaries saw the issue of three different types of long guns. Long rifles, carbines, and then short rifles. Typically, long rifles and carbines were the earliest, and then short rifles were a later idea. So this is going to be a two-part uh, series on long rifles, short rifles, and carbines. This first one is going to be talking about it in the context of militaries in the 20th century, and some of this information will apply before, but mostly we're going to be focusing on the 20th century. Then the next part is going to be talking about this in context of modern collectors, people like me and you. But before we can get too into that, I need to give you a brief update. YouTube, if you follow any other gun channels, you've probably heard that they have been increasingly strict on some policies. In fact, they've been causing issues for people who didn't even violate policies. And this has led to a lot of fear from channels like mine that we will get suspended or have our accounts deleted for nothing that we had done that violated YouTube's policies. Or because of things we had done years ago that violated updates to YouTube's policies that came later. So because of that, I wanted to let you know that I will be and currently am transferring all of my content onto Utreon, which is a hosting platform that's kind of similar to YouTube and Patreon. Now, if you would like to, you can start watching these videos there, and I would in fact really appreciate that. But all of these videos, as long as my channel is allowed up on YouTube, will be posted on YouTube. So that being said, I will be going to Utreon as well as YouTube from now on. And if you would like to support me there, there are some options there. Okay, now let's actually get into the topic of today's video. Uh, short rifles, long rifles, and carbines in 21st century militaries. Typically, the way this would work was that long rifles would be issued in mass to infantry. This is a Mosin-Nagant 1891. This one was made in 1917 by the Remington Arsenal. So this is akin to a rifle that would have been used in World War I. In fact, if this rifle was actually uh, purchased by the Russians, it would have been used in World War I, but this one was not. So typically, these were used for a number of reasons. In fact, they were just the style of the time for infantry to use long rifles like this one. If you didn't, your military was not viewed properly because you didn't issue the correct rifle. So typically these were issued in the early parts of the 21st century or the 20th century because one, they had a longer sight radius and that longer barrel also meant that you had more power. So this gave you more range out to longer distances and more accuracy out to longer distances with that longer sight radius. So the longer barrel means higher velocity, more power, and more range. Now, in general, these rifles, and in fact, all of the rifles I have on this table, are overkill. The 7.62x54R that this shoots will go through a person. It's probably enough stopping power to kill a horse, to be honest, but they were used predominantly against people. Another reason why these were so long was for bayonet biting. Although this one is not a very old long rifle, it is a long rifle. This one is a Turkish M38. And when I attach the bayonet, you can see that this rifle is almost as tall as me. So if you are fighting with somebody and you want to reach them from far away, that is an advantage. You can get really far away with this rifle. So the predominant reason why reasons why those rifles were used was because one, it was the style of the time, and if you carried a rifle, it looked like it should be a long rifle. That was just the thing you did. So the predominant reasons why long rifles were used were one, it was the style of the time, two, bayonet fighting, three, velocity, power, and range, as well as accuracy that were associated with that longer barrel, and four, just some holdovers from the black powder periods of time. I may be missing something, but that's the general reason. Now, also, this is kind of a broad overview video. This isn't going into specifics of specific military doctrines country by country. I will talk about some of those things, but I will probably miss some details. So if one country had it for this reason, you'll just need to forgive me for that. Long rifles were issued en masse to infantry. Carbines were typically used more for your specialty troops. They were used for people like artillery or cavalry. Generally, the idea was one of two things. First, this person needs to have a gun, they should have a rifle, but they probably aren't as likely to use it. 
i.e. cavalry or people who are more likely to be behind lines. However, the second reason why somebody would be issued rifles like this is if they are expected to use it, but they need to be more mobile. So one example that you could see is the Carcano TS. I don't have a long rifle Carcano to show you, but it is about the length of those other two rifles. This Carcano TS is a short and handy light rifle. It's really easy to carry and handle with one hand. There are also Carcano carbines that have an underfolding bayonet, and so those were in use too, but the Carcano TS is a bit of a different design. That's because the TS stands for a Troop Special. The special troops in the Italian military were sort of like mobile infantry. I'm doing my part, are you? They were intended to move quickly from one location to another, they didn't carry quite as much with them as standard infantry, and they carried smaller rifles that they could get around easier. Other advantages and uses of carbines were that they could be made from guns that had longer barrels, maybe if the top part of the barrel was damaged, or if the military just wanted to transition to a shorter military rifle. So you can see other Carcanos like this one, except that they have a longer sight radius that matches the rifle sight radius. That means that at some point in their history, they were cut down and shrunk quite a bit. Now, something that militaries started to realize in the throes of World War I was that there are a lot of situations where a smaller rifle is a lot more convenient. Think about it. If you're raiding a trench that is maybe six to eight feet wide, would you really want to be fighting somebody hand to hand with this long rifle? It would be really easy to get it stuck in something it wasn't supposed to. You would run into a lot of problems. So for things like trench raids or times when people were expected to do fighting inside of a trench, a lot of carvings like this were actually preferred in those instances, because if you were fighting with somebody, you could use your bayonet or you could hit them with a stock, and it was a lot easier to grab onto than one of those long rifles. Also, if you're making the trek across no man's land and you're getting shot at, something smaller might mean you can run a little faster. We saw this idea develop in World War II as well. This is a Mosin-Nagant M44, and the Mosin-Nagant M44 was used in the later parts of World War II. It started to see a lot of issuance, uh, especially as Russia was fighting in cities and doing things where they might be indoors and the shorter rifle is quite a bit more convenient. Now, these do have a side folding bayonet, which is, I think, a really cool feature. And Russian doctrine would dictate that you would have the bayonet fixed always during combat. Um, I don't know if I would quite want to do this if I was inside, but I guess if I needed to cycle a bolt every time, it might be nice to be able to stab somebody if uh, there were two guys and I fired my one shot. Now, like I said, the rounds that these guns shoot are pretty well overkill. So because they are overkill, putting it into a carbine, it still does the job quite well. One downside of a lot of carbines is that they are really, really short, and most of them don't have any type of muzzle break. So what that leads to is that when you shoot the gun, there is a lot of concussion that comes from it. Most Nagant M44s are famous for the fireball they shoot out at the end of the barrel and the concussive blast that happens when you shoot it. They can be quite painful for some people. Personally, I like that. And the lighter weight also means that they recoil quite heavy compared to longer rifles. Now, leading up to and during World War I, a number of countries started to realize that instead of issuing a large rifle that worked really well in their minds for the infantry, and a carbine that was better for some of those other uses, they could make one rifle that worked well for everyone, i.e. what we would call the universal short rifle. One of those guns that is the most popular or at least the most well-known is the short magazine Lee Enfield. Now this is an Ishapur 2A1. It's virtually identical to an SMLE. It's just in a different round. And so it has a different magazine, but visually it's similar. So it'll work to show the point. This is the rifle that the British used during World War I. And they issued a gun like this to everyone. Um, some people of course got handguns, but in general, every soldier would get a rifle like this one. They had another rifle that was also a universal short rifle, but this one serves the point. What they found was that even for the infantry, something like this could be more practical for your infantry because they don't really need the extra barrel and the shorter barrel makes it a little bit handier to use. It also doesn't have that massive concussive blast or the heavy recoil that a carbine has. 
it's really pretty convenient for anybody who is using it. Like I said, this rifle and ones like it were issued since the beginning of World War I, and so the British were on board with this tactic even before. Same thing with the Americans. However, the Germans started with the Car 98 uh, long rifle, and that is very similar, although a little bit different, to the Turkish Mauser that I showed you earlier. However, during the war, uh, their carbine was not a short carbine like these, but it was more in line with a short rifle. This is the Car 98 A and AZ rifles. They are an intermediate length, like this Yugoslavian M2447 Mauser. And what Germany started to realize was that these rifles worked really, really well for everybody. So what's interesting is with the universal short rifle, we sort of see this idea coming from two perspectives. People who have a long rifle, and then they think it would be more convenient for their troops, so they shorten it. Or countries that are using carbines in certain positions and realize, hey, this is actually adequate for everybody, why don't we just switch to this? So Germany started issuing and using more and more Car 98 A and AZ rifles. Instead of using a whole bunch of the long rifles. Now what's interesting also is because militaries had this idea that a long rifle was the rifle of war when Germany lost World War I and they were subject to the Treaty of Versailles, the Treaty of Versailles dictated how many long rifles, what people saw as war rifles, they could have. But it was less strict on carbines and their Car 98A and AZ was their carbine. So they made many of those rifles because they could get around the Treaty of Versailles in that way. And that idea continued for them into World War II, when their predominant rifle was the Car 98K, a bolt action very similar to this one except with a turned down bolt handle and in a middle length. So the predominant use of long rifles is that it was common at the time. They were used because of the longer barrel and longer sight radius, which led to more power and more range, and because they were useful for bayonet fighting, giving you extra reach. Carbines were typically used for specialty troops who either needed to move faster or weren't as likely to need a gun so something smaller would be easier for them to carry. And then universal short rifles came in, typically either when countries found out that their carbine was adequate for most people, so they maybe lengthened it a little bit so it would be more useful for the infantry, or in the case of Germans, just took it the way it was, or they would shorten their long rifle because it was more convenient that way for all of their troops. Now let's take a brief moment to talk about submachine guns. Some machine guns are kind of in a separate category because during later times they did tend to serve alongside these other rifles. However, they would serve alongside both long rifle and carbine systems as well as universal short rifle systems. We also need to talk about another gun and that is the Mosin-Nagant 9130. Now the Mosin-Nagant 9130 is a special case because it could kind of go either way whether it is a long rifle or a universal short rifle. Well, yes, it was a shortened down version of a long rifle, the Mosin-Nagant 1891. That is what the 30 means, is that it is the later model. It also served alongside other carbines like the M38 and M44 I just showed you. So it's in this interesting place of, is it a long rifle or is it a universal short rifle? Well, I would say in their doctrine, it fits in as a long rifle, but for the next video where we're gonna be talking about these types of things for the modern shooter, it fits more in the short rifle category. However, we'll talk a little bit about more about that idea then. As we get out of the repeater era and enter the auto-loading era, things begin to shift a little bit. So the first thing we need to talk about is the US in World War II. Although the M1 Garand served alongside the M1 carbine, I think you could still argue that the Garand is a universal short rifle because it was issued to all troops regardless of their situations. And the M1 carbine was originally designed to be more of a replacement for the 1911 handgun than the M1 Garand in those roles. So since the M1 carbine was less like a rifle and more like a better handgun or a PDW, I would still say the M1 Garand is a universal short rifle. Now we also need to talk about the Cold War era. We see two really clear examples to talk about, so I'm going to talk about Russia and the United States. For Russia and the Soviet Union, what they did was they adopted a rifle and what they called an SMG in the same caliber. We wouldn't call the AK platform an SMG today, but originally that was what the Russians intended it as. So they had the SKS, which was going to be their long rifle, and then their AK, which was going to be their SMG. However, pretty quickly they realized that the AK was 
perfectly adequate as a service rifle, and so the AK became basically their universal rifle. The Americans went about things a little bit different. They started by adopting an M16 with a 20-inch barrel. Now, the M16 with the 20-inch barrel was basically used like a universal rifle because it is such a light gun. I mean, even though this Carcano is a very light rifle compared to every other gun on this table, the M16 is still lighter. So the M16 could be issued to everybody, and so it basically filled the role of a universal rifle. But things started to change a little bit because it was still pretty long. So when the military was issuing that, they also issued some troops a carbine. Now, I don't have a carbine this short, but typically the carbine they issued had a 10 and a half inch barrel. This one has a 16 inch barrel to comply with US law, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. So their carbine, or what was also called an SMG actually, in this manual, had a 10 and a half inch barrel, which with an A2 or an A1 flash suppressor would go until right there, but originally it had a longer flash suppressor, which would go to about here. And then when the U.S. moved away from the rifle for all of their troops, they went to a 14 and a half inch barrel, which is basically uh, a carbine. And that's what it's called is the M4 carbine. 14 and a half inches goes to where this blue tape is right here. So again, we have a long rifle and a carbine in the U.S. military, which is really interesting. So some units in the military still do use the 20 inch AR, but... I believe most units now have switched over to the 14 and a half inch barrel. So we have a long rifle and a carbine, but where does the universal rifle come in? Well, that comes in in the U.S. civilian market. So according to U.S. law, a rifle is a rifle as long as it has a 16 inch barrel or longer. So what we see in the United States is most ARs have a 16 inch barrel. In a sense, because the AR is America's rifle, the 16 inch has become the universal short rifle of the American civilian market, which I think is really interesting. It's a middle length that works for everyone. It doesn't have an incredibly high report that the carbine has, but it is lighter than the long rifle. And it gets around laws like the Car 98 A AZs and Car 98 Ks got around the Treaty of Versailles. So it's interesting to me that the universal short rifle today is fulfilling the same category as the Universal Short Rifle did in 1918. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm 8mm Mauser Man, and I pulled all of these guns out of my safe, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Name John.